I'm 23 years old. I live in Hennifer, Utah. A hometown, very small. We don't have a grocery store. We don't have a gas station. A lot of open fields. Living on a ranch. There's a lot of chores to be done every day. We have 80 cows, probably 30, 40 horses. I like dirt biking. I got two brothers, one sister. I'm the baby of the family. I had had three other children before Chris and they were normal pregnancies. My pregnancy with him was completely normal. As he was born, he was in complete cardiac and respiratory arrest. Um, they rushed him to the NICU and they, they said, we, we don't know what's wrong with him, but you're probably never going to take this baby home. The doctor um, in the delivery room rushed him from the delivery room as soon as they realized he wasn't breathing on its own. And so from that moment forward was complete chaos. My name is Chris and I have PK deficiency. With PK deficiency, you can always tell when you're getting sick because your blood levels drop lower and then you're always tired. Pyruvate kinase is, is, a, is in a key step in how the red cell produces energy. And if you have a deficiency in pyruvate kinase, the red cell doesn't have enough energy and falls apart more readily in a process called hemolysis. So instead of the healthy red cell, which lasts 120 days, a red cell that has pyruvate kinase deficiency only lasts a matter of days or weeks. I think he had to have about eight blood transfusions after birth. So they pumped him full of fluids, they got him going. Um, after about a month, he seemed to be fine and they sent us home. And uh, his first visit to the, the pediatrician, um, he was in trouble again, and so we ended up back in the hospital before we even knew what Christopher was suffering from. And then my husband remembered that he had a cousin that had some rare blood disease. I remember them transfusing him repeatedly, and that symptom uh, was the same as Christopher's. We asked the hematologist if that was a possibility, and it was a rare blood condition, and they decided to check him um, for the PK and checked his, his mother and myself as well for the gene, and we both come back positive, as well as Christopher for pyruvate kinase. PK deficiency is, is a genetic condition. It's autosomal recessive, that means an individual inherits it by having one copy of an abnormal gene from one parent and an abnormal copy of another gene from another parent. So the parents are carriers for the condition. And since PK deficiency is rare, if somebody doesn't recognize the red cell part of that clinical picture, it can be very difficult to diagnose. So, you know, we kind of, we kind of accepted what it was and he was getting transfused, uh, usually between every three to five weeks. The historic treatments for PK deficiency have been what we call supportive. Transfusions doesn't address the primary issue, that's giving somebody healthy red cells um, in addition to their PK deficient red cells. Taking out the spleen is also a historic supportive treatment that we've used that uh, because the red cells um, hemolyze, break apart most readily in the spleen, taking out the spleen can make the red cells lifespan longer. 
It was a very hard decision because, you know, we had been warned once the spleen's removed, they're really susceptible to illnesses and overwhelming bacterial infections, which, you know, can be deadly. But we had his spleen removed at three. That really eliminated the transfusions unless he got sick. And then there are ways to address the complications. If there are gallstones removing the gallbladder, for example, I do remember some of my gallbladder attacks. It just felt like a knife was stabbing into your stomach and you'd get really bad jaundice. All you could really do is just lay on the couch and just wait it out for about 30, 40 minutes until it went away. One of the doctors in the GI clinic said, this is not his gallbladder and we are not doing surgery. Me and my husband had studied and researched. We knew things that maybe they aren't aware of. I think it's really important for people who have rare conditions to be their own advocate and really advocate for themselves during those visits. It still took us probably three days to convince them to take a look at his gallbladder. And when they did it, his gallbladder was completely impacted with stones and, and just basically non-functioning. And so they removed his gallbladder at age five. And at the end of the day, my mom was right. He was just persistent. So I relied heavily upon his mother's intuition with Christopher. One of the most common complications of PK deficiency is iron overload. And when you have red cell transfusions in the red cell is iron and your body doesn't have uh, good mechanisms for getting rid of iron. What can happen in somebody who has iron overload is that the iron starts to deposit in places that you don't want to have it. And if you have iron that builds up in the liver, it causes liver damage. You can develop liver cirrhosis or failure. Iron that's in the heart can lead to cardiac dysfunction and, um, and that can, can lead to death. The GI doctor told us, you know, that iron, it settles in the liver first, it will settle in the brain, it will settle in the heart, it will just keep settling until it destroys all these organs. And he said, you're honestly, if you don't do something, you're looking at a child that's going to need a liver transplant probably by age 10. And I, I checked with the hematologist at Primary Children's and about doing chelation and to get rid of the iron. And he, he absolutely not, it's too expensive, we don't believe in doing that. It kind of makes me angry some of the stories that my mom tells me about the doctors telling my mom you don't know like we're the doctors we know what's wrong we're not gonna do this because you're not a doctor you don't know but my mom did know because she'd research she'd fight and she was gonna do everything to make sure that I went home I contacted a doctor in Oakland California and I sent her all Christopher's medical records and she contacted Primary Children's and said, you will absolutely begin this chelation. I think if it wasn't for my mom, I probably wouldn't be here today because she's the one who's been with me through all of it since day one. It was a pump. He had to have it started every night. I would put the needle in and that he would wear the little backpack pumping the drugs in to, and then it would just come out in his urine. It would cause the iron to come out in his urine. I think one of the complications too that um, is talked about less often, I would say in the medical community is the extent to which having pyruvate kinase deficiency affects somebody's overall um, mental health um, and everyday well-being, and, and, and really the need to address that as a complication of this condition as well. The way I dealt with the stress from PK deficiency is I uh, spend a lot of time in the mountains. I'd go up, we own a lot of property. I'd go up there and just ride around in the scenery. I just enjoy it up there because it's quiet, there's nobody there. It was rough. Besides the emotional strain, I mean, it was a financial strain also. And, you know, trying to just juggle the family life. And it was, my husband was my rock. I, you know, I, I just remember um, when they told us he wasn't going to make it, I just remember him hugging me and just, you know, crying. I'll always remember that. And I, I don't think I would have got through it without him because he, he was just my strength. And we just depended on each other.
I think we relied heavily on family and friends and each other because we weren't uh, at all familiar with the hospital setting or having you know someone sick like that so family and friends helped us get through a lot of the toughest times I would say. What's been really exciting about Parve kinase deficiency are the uh, number of clinical research studies that are ongoing in this, in this condition. And um, one area uh, that's been exciting is in PK activators that help to uh, increase the lifespan of the protein, make it last longer, make it more effective, so that it really addresses the PK deficiency. And for about half the people who have parvic kinase deficiency, PK activators improve everyday quality of life. So this has been a, a major milestone in the treatment of parvic kinase deficiency with FDA approval of one of the PK activators. So uh, his hematologist became aware of a study and as soon as Christopher turned 18, he said he needs to get in this study. He's done really, really well. It has been a lot of work and has taken a lot of time, but to me it's been worth it because I can see a difference with my blood count levels going up and I don't have to get transfusions as often. I'm very hopeful for the future. Uh, I basically live a normal life. Just whenever I get sick, I just gotta take more precautions than somebody else. Another area that's been really exciting um, and uh, important to follow in terms of uh, clinical research is, uh, is in gene therapy. Since pyruvate kinase deficiency affects a single gene, it's amenable potentially to gene therapy as a way to cure pyruvate kinase deficiency. And those studies are ongoing. I mean, it's remarkable in pyruvate kinase deficiency how much progress has been made. And I'm so excited to see what happens over the next five to 10 years. To me, I'm very lucky to have the wonderful family that I have, and I just want to thank all of them for being there with me every step of the way. One of the things that impresses me most about Christopher is his attitude. He's grateful uh, every day for the life that he has, and he approaches life um, head on. Extremely proud and grateful um, of him and what he's been able to overcome. And, just extremely grateful. And then, how old's that, uh, Dusty? Maybe four. I've always said he's my little miracle child. I don't know if it's because of what he's been through. He's literally the strongest person I know, and he he loves his life. He lives life to the fullest. And just his overall outlook on life and the strength that he has. I just he he lives a normal life.